One of the reasons that I love Stardew Valley is that it's a bit of a cobbled together masterpiece. And by that I mean it's beautiful, but if you look closer you can see the little cracks in the game that allow you to do some crazy stuff. Today we're talking about exploits. Keep in mind that all the exploits we're going over are in the game as of version 1.5.2, unless I mention otherwise. So what would I consider an exploit? Well, it has to be something that unintentionally skips or trivializes a part of the game. For example, would I consider tea saplings an exploit? Well, you're making a significant amount of money that for sure can speed up the game, but you're using an intended method of just selling them. So no, that wouldn't be an exploit. Here's an example of something that is an exploit. For the first exploit, we're going to be scamming Pierre. The only things you need for this is a lot of any artisan good and level 10 farming. What we're going to do is we have the artisan profession, which gives us plus 40% sell price for any artisan good. Most likely you're going to be using wine. I have 200 starfruit wine, which isn't a crazy amount to have in endgame when you're trying to raise money for obelisks or something. And we're going to sell it to him. And that's going to give us, we're starting from 50 gold, it's going to give us 630,000. You know, a meager amount. What we need to do next is actually go to the sewers. Down here, we have this statue that allows you to change your professions at will for the price of 10,000 gold. So we're going to go ahead and do that for our farming profession, which has the artisan profession. As we sleep overnight, it's going to ask us what professions we'd like to swap to, and you can swap to anything that doesn't raise the price of your artisan goods, so we'll just choose Shepherd, just to choose something. So on the next day, we're going to go back to Pierre's, and the game gives you the option to buy back anything that you've sold for the same price that you sold it for, except it's actually sold back to you at whatever price you could sell it for at that moment, which means if you had a profession that boosted the price, you're now going to be able to buy it back for cheaper than you sold it. So if I were to buy all this back, that leaves me with 298,000 gold. You're not able to buy back absolutely everything because every day that you wait, the amount that you sold to him is going to be decreased. So now we're actually going to go back to the sewers and change our profession back once again. Here we are change professions back to farming. So the total cost of this part is going to be 20,000. Go to sleep. We're going to change our profession back to tiller and artisan. And once we go back, we can now once again sell him for the increased price of the starfruit wine. And as you can see, now we've made an extra about 100,000 from that just by reselling that. Obviously, the more that you sell in one go, the more that you're going to get out of it. So you could stockpile a few harvests for this. Make sure that it is an artisan good. It can be cheese, wine, preserved jars, anything like that. Next up, out of bounds glitches have been around almost as long as gaming itself. And of course, Stardew is no exception. You can pretty much get out of bounds anywhere as long as you have a scythe or a sword and any loading zone that leads off screen. So give me a moment here. So due to the fact that swinging your scythe or sword slightly moves you forward, any loading zone actually won't activate unless you're actually walking. So if we go low enough, we're actually below the loading zone and now we're out of bounds. And this of course can be used for poor man's green screen, although there are mods for that. But there are a few uses. First, if we get out of bounds in Cindersap Forest, I just want to say, even if you're completely off screen, uh, give it a while, just keep swinging because you don't want to accidentally hit that loading zone. We should be good now, so I'm just going to start heading downwards. You'll see that I can actually walk on the water if I so choose to over here. So where I'm actually heading here is all the way to the bottom under the entrance to the sewer. If you're savvy to some of the secrets in this game, you'll know that you can actually catch an Iridium Crobus statue down here if you're able to reach it. However, you need level 15 fishing to do that. I'm having a little trouble getting through here. There we go. 15 fishing, which can only be accomplished at the very end of the game. However, doing this, you can get it on day one if you so want to. Now, normally you're not allowed to get up into the spa area until the third day of summer. However, here we go. So using this method, you can actually, it's very hard to see it, get to the spa area early. And I can't really think of too many reasons you'd want to do this because I mean, 
well, now you're stuck here because you can't get out, but you can get into the spa. If you do do this, make sure that you bring like a warp totem or something because that's the only way you're gonna get out. Although, I do wanna show one more thing. All right, I believe we're far enough down. Now we can sneak over here to this loading zone and look at that, we're here with all of our clothes and you can get a funky little looking animation if you get into the water, but that's not all. Let's say we have a fence and we place it right here. Now, if we jump in, it doesn't push us all the way through and we can just walk upwards and into here. Now, before versions 1.5, you could actually use this to walk out of here with the buff and still retain it. And so you could go to the mines and, you know, use the buff to have infinite energy and health through the entire mine run. However, unfortunately, that has been patched out. I tried getting out of bounds in all kinds of places, but those are the only times that I could use it to any avail. All of the areas in Ginger Island are kind of blocked by extra walls. There's no other loading zones that really give you access to anywhere, but if you found anything, please let me know. This next one starts on the character creation screen. Every item in the game has an index number, something that looks like bracket, uh, we'll say 99, right bracket. And in your name, you can fit three of these as long as one of them is a two digit number. So we'll say 943 and, oh gosh, uh, 420. Just three off the top of my head. With a name like that, every time a character says your name, you will get the items that you put into your name. And apparently I got a dwarf scroll. Okay, interesting. A red mushroom. All right, very cool. He didn't give me another one. Okay, let's try to talk to some of the other people. Of course, if you could find the index numbers for things like the legend or say prismatic shards, you'd be set. Now it seems to be cutting out the 99. I'm thinking that maybe that wasn't an index number for an item, but I do have Dwarf Scroll 4s and Red Mushrooms. Now, unfortunately, you can only talk to people once, but there is a way to basically get infinite of whatever item that you want. You can call Clint and he has three possible replies. Two of these replies will have your name in it. So you can basically do that over and over again to continue to get the numbers infinitely. This also works when buying an animal, you can give them the index names and it'll work as well. And just a reminder, you can change your name whenever you want after you've gotten the wizard is ink back in his basement. One side effect of playing the game in multiplayer is that there's a tiny bit of lag, enough that if both players do the same action at the exact same time, both of their actions will activate. This works for tons of things in the game, like picking up forgeables, breaking open a supply crate, or an ore node, and you can even build two buildings at once if you confirm it at the same time. One of the most profitable things you can do with this is duplicate any placeable item by putting it on a table and picking it up at the same time, making the item go into both players' inventories. Now to get into the secret woods, you actually need the steel axe. You need to upgrade that thing twice. Although one of the most well-known tricks in the game is you can just place a chair behind it, jump to the chair, and you're good. This is useful because you only need a copper axe to actually be able to break the stumps in here. Plus you can find morels, which are a fairly rare item, and it'll give you a chance to harvest all of the bushes during salmonberry season, which you'd probably not have a steel axe by then. If you need to get out, you can do the same thing. Place the chair here, jump in, hop out, and you're gone. That's not the only thing you can do with it though. Sometimes characters will walk through doors and they'll leave them open. And in that moment, you can place a chair in the hallway. Now keep in mind, I don't have two hearts with Marnie and I don't have two hearts with Jazz. But if you place a chair there, you can jump in and hop out and you can get on in. This is very good for Marnie specifically because Lewis's shorts spawn in here and you can just grab them real quick. Don't even need to get friendship up with Marnie. Take your chair and run. If you play on PC, you may be familiar with chat commands. You can use these to activate any kind of emote. Or there's even a few little secrets in there. Like if you put slash key. Oh, hey kid, I'm here. Or slash CA and Concerned Ape gives you a little message. One thing that you can do 
is there's a bug in the game that can cause you to not have all of the golden walnuts that you've actually collected. So if that happens, there's something in the game called Recount Nuts to help you out with that. However, know that once you get into the walnut room, you can sell any of your extra walnuts for key gems. So I'll just go ahead and buy all these. Once you do that, those walnuts aren't officially counted as used. So if you use recount nuts again, you'll get those 14 walnuts back and you can just do this forever. So yeah, you know, trivializes the hardest part of the entire game, oh well. The hardest achievement in all of Stardew Valley on Steam is Fector's Challenge. This requires you to beat the entirety of Journey of the Prairie King without dying a single time. As of version 1.5, if you beat a stage, you can exit and it will save your progress, continue journey, and we'll start on level 1-2, just where we left off. What you can do from there is if you actually sleep, the game file itself will save your save from Journey of the Pr Really? Really? They're dead. <laughs> Hold on. Wait, but this can happen? I... Hey. Today I learned. You know what? I'm genuinely wondering if that's actually going to revive them. Uh, no. <laughs> Anyways, now that we saved the whole game, it saved the state that Journey of the Prairie King ended with, which is deathless. So now... If we were to, say, die, note that I have three lives up there in the top left corner. If we die, go down to two lives. And then reset our game real quick. And the game never registered that we died in the first place. You can use this to get the hardest achievement in the entire game. Sorry to the 0.9% of people who just want their rare achievement. It's completely exploitable. So you may or may not be familiar with animation canceling. To explain it quickly, with an animation like swinging my axe, that's, you know, pretty slow and bulky. I have to wait for it to finish. If you press right shift, delete, and R during an animation, it'll automatically cancel that and you'll be able to swing a lot faster than usual. You can do this with pretty much anything in the game that activates an animation, including milking. But that's not the exploit that we're talking about. This is about something that you can do with animation canceling. When you go to milk an animal, the moment you start the milking, you get friendship with them. And once you finish the entire animation, you then get the milk. If you were to cancel the animation before it completes, you can continually get that friendship gain every single time you start the animation without actually getting the milk out. With this trick, you can easily get to full friendship with an animal in a single day, which increases the quality of any products that they give you. Unfortunately, this only works with the milkables, but it's still useful. Sorry to the mobile players who feel left out from a lot of these exploits so far, but this one's just for you. Sometimes shopkeepers only sell a certain amount of an item, specifically if it's something really good. On mobile, all you need to do to restock the shop is open the shop again. It's really that simple. It's pretty well known due to it being so easy to activate, but now you know for sure. The most useful instance that I can think of this for is rare seeds from the traveling cart, which only ever stock one or five if you're really lucky. Krobus can also sell some really good cooked dishes for really cheap, and normally only five at a time. Sometimes you can literally just sell the food for profit as well. This is basically another infinite money exploit. So here's another mobile only for you. Did you get a really good item from the trash? Just make a save backup, close the game, reopen, and you can just pick it up again. Say what you will about PC having 1.5 and Ginger Island and all of that, but y'all still get a bit of fun out of being in 1.4. Doing the research for this video has made me realize just how many things have been fixed in all the updates. This game used to be a completely different beast, but it's still fun to see what ways the game can be played around with. If you have any fun exploits that you've found, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.